amazing moment here in our county, 042. And of course, Kisumu is normally a beautiful space. Much more now when you're hosted with your deputy governor to delve much into issues which affects our space directly or indirectly. So we are honored to be hosted by Dr. Matthew here in his office to talk a little much more about what you have always wanted to know, Afri cities, marine port, and also COVID effects in our space. So welcome to our talk show, Dr. Matthew. Karibuni sana. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm interested to know, are you a doctor by profession or you're a doctor by study? I'm a doctor by profession, but that PhD is coming uh, in the next few years. Is it? Yeah. We wish you the best and of course we expect to see much more offered from you with your profession and also with the work that you're currently doing here in our county. Thank you. Now, Dr. Ri, uh, Kisumu is in the map already mm -hmm. from uh, what we know, and that is the reason why probably Afri Cities is coming down. So I'm interested to know, what has the government of Kisumu done in terms of bringing real-time investors in our space? Well, Afri Cities will be one of the biggest uh, events, uh, not just um, in Kenya, uh, not just in Kisumu, but the biggest event in a, a medium-sized city. Uh, this is the ninth edition meaning we have had some other eight editions in the past. All those editions have been held in capital cities. Okay. So this is the first one in a medium-sized city. Okay. It was out of the effort, um, you know, by Governor Professor Peter Nyangen to lobby, um, you know, the United, uh, you know, the, 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 the Afri Cities, you know, organization, okay? It's called an organization of local government, cities and local governments in Africa. Um, you mean to, to bring the conference to Kisumu. Now, one of the reasons, I think the major reason why I wanted to host this event is first of all to, um, you know, showcase Kisumu to the world, okay? But probably the most important, um, you know, deliverable out of the Afri Cities Convention would be the business, businesses that we close and the investors that we get in here. Now, you talk about, um, you know, an enabling business environment or investment environment. As a government, of course, you know, you don't invest directly. Sure. Rarely you do. But you create what you call an enabling environment. When uh, governor was campaigning for office, he did observe that Kisumu County is a county of great potential, but a disappointing underachiever. Okay. He went further to say that uh, Kisumu is walking with the chicken and we need to now fly with the eagles. Sure. Now, everything uh, that you've done uh, from the time you arrived in office in August 2017 up to this point is to, you know, set Kisumu uh, to fly with the eagles. I can confidently report, by the way, that we are now flying with the eagles. Okay. okay. If you look at the, the city, okay, I know people talk about, um, you know, uh, disruptions uh, that may have occurred initially in our administration in terms of reorganizing the business okay mm -hmm. so now we have got a number of uh, markets uh, some of them delivered some of them be in process of being delivered you know kibuye the, ma the largest market in eastern central africa we are modernizing it okay if you go to Tongolo, we are modernizing it uh, the bus park is moving from where it is to you know to nyamasaria so that we can allow that space you know to be used um you know for you know um you know, this is really inside the CBD. Okay. So we need to have some high-rise building there, offices there and stuff like that. So there's quite a bit of reorganization uh, that's occurred in Kisumu. We have Chichwa Market, you know, where people can trade in dignity. You also know about uh, Uhuru uh, Business Complex. So those are part of the reorganization that took place uh, initially when we were starting. We have uh, done our best to, you know, to link up Kisumu uh, with the potential investors, other than those who are investing around okay we had the kusia Dares festival uh, uh way back in 2020 then last year we had the kisumu international investment conference that was a precursor uh, to the conference that we're going to have uh, this year which is the africities Afri cities convention and i think this time will not even be enough to tell you how much kisumu is going to benefit uh from the africities convention but just um you know to to briefly tell you, in terms of infrastructure, we are building, uh, I think, the second largest uh, conference center uh, at the ASK showground. We'll only be second to uh, KICC, but probably with more modern facilities than, than the KICC. Okay. Now, other than that, of course, you know about the Jomo Kenyatta International um, you know, uh, yeah. Football Stadium, which was built there. That's 
that will partly be used also in the hosting of Africa's convention. There's tarmacking of the road between the airport to Mamboleo roundabout. Then there's also tarmacking of the road between the airport, of course, and Royal Swiss roundabout on Kakamega Road, Kisumu Kakamega, Kakamega Road. There's going to be completion of uh, Kisumu Boys roundabout to Mamboleo uh, Junction. There's a road there being constructed. Of course, there's also been uh, construction of um, you know Mamboleo uh, for Tanan and Moroni Road is also on ongoing. All these things are coming because of the Africans that we are, we are hosting. In terms of uh, hotel, um, you know, invest those who are investing in hotels here, the people who are coming into Kisumu for this particular conference are already more than uh, the hotels that we are uh, we are having. So the the hotels in Kisumu are all going to be fully booked. Okay, the Airbnbs are going to be fully booked. And by the way, their surrounding counties are going to benefit out of this uh, conference. Vihiga, Kakamega, Siaya, mm -hmm. you know, all the surrounding counties of Kisumu are roped in, okay? And uh, we have mapped the hotels there out and the Airbnbs, and they're also going to benefit from, you know, the Africa Convention, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, I've, I've told you the list is endless very, in very terms of the investment. Now, the airport, for example, is being expanded, okay? Uh, we, we are building extra, you know, lounges at the airport. We are doing cold rooms. We are doing, um, you know, um, warehouses because Kisumu now we have started are lifting uh, fresh produce uh, from the county of Kisumu. All this, by the way, is in preparation for our cities. But when our is finally over, the investment infrastructure will remain. Okay, yeah. that's a good uh, highlight on really what. People should expect of Afri cities, you know, yeah. because many people ask, okay, Afri cities is coming. What really do we stand to gain? I think that's a proper explanation. But maybe another um, thing that, because uh, I know that I've talked about hotels and I've talked about big investments, but let's think about the small, uh, medium-sized enterprises. So you may be there, you are doing maybe in the in the fashion industry, so you're having a fashion line. It may, it may not be a line that is not actually known. Okay, but I know there's some very nice people. Uh, in Kisumu, like for example, you've seen the clothes that the politicians put on for campaigns. Yeah. They are done by local people. Mm -hmm. You may be doing baskets, anything. You may be making shoes out of um, yeah, fish skin, mm -hmm. all these kind of things. We are going to have um, what you call, you know, the, 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 the real conference, and then we also have the exhibitions. Now, in the exhibitions, okay, and we have a whole new, you know, um, you know, building done just for exhibitions alone, which is part of the conference center. Okay, that such is apart from KICC, by the way, because KICC does not have an exhibition wing. Mm -hmm. So all these small and medium-sized enterprises are encouraged, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to link up with the office secretariat to get space to display their wares. What we intend to do is to link them up with people who can give them the business. So maybe I'm a, a, a fashion um, designer and I have a cloth line. If you can link you up with somebody in the US, for example, okay, that can, you know, who can be buying from you, okay, so or it can be a big company, export. you know, that would be a great thing. Or it can be a leading a cloth chain, yeah, uh, like, uh, like you know, the main, I don't want to mention them here for purposes of advertising them uh, in your channel. But if they can link up, because these guys are always looking for new, you know, designs. So let people come out there and showcase their innovations and what they're able to do. That's a very good one, mm. Dr. And uh, we hope that you county people know where the Afri City Secretariat office is. I think we'll give you direction on the screen somewhere in Milimani. I will take it upon me to give you direction so that you can link directly so that you may benefit also from this big program which is going to come in our space. Now, Dr. Uh, COVID happened. And uh, it is not something which only affected Kisumu. It is something which affected the whole, whole, whole world, yeah? And uh, right now, we are in the recovery mode. Uh, maybe I would beg to understand what response did you people participate in and uh, what is what is it that we are doing to recover completely from COVID? Because yeah. literally, we need to move on from... from Just shortly to get you back, um, other than the physical address of the Afri Cities Convention, Secretariat, they can also log into the website okay. of the Afri Cities. You can do it register online. I know some people are very tech savvy, okay. so they can do that. For those of them who still want to come to the office, that would be great. Okay. Please give them that guideline. Okay. Now, COVID happened, uh, just like you also observed, it was um, you know, a worldwide catastrophe. 
Okay, and uh, we were very much affected uh, in the country, in the region. In Kisumu, we were affected. We lost quite a number of people as well. Uh, so many people also lost their livelihoods, uh, so to speak. You know, it affected jobs largely. Okay. Uh, I want to thank at this point uh, the governor and uh, the health and sanitation team. Uh, they worked around the clock. And uh, if you compare the effects of COVID-19 within this county and elsewhere, uh, it was fairly well managed uh, here. Uh, we also worked together with the Lakeridge and Economic Block. We had a team of eminent persons, uh, I think a team of 14, uh, led by one Professor Kamarogu, who is um, a health specialist uh, initially working for WHO. And uh, they were able to design models and uh, to give advice to counties within the region, 14 in number. And out of that, I think uh, we were able to, you know, fairly uh, well uh, deal with the, uh, with the pandemic, you know, uh, fairly well. But uh, in process, of course, we did quite a bit of uh, facility improvement, okay, within our facilities, our military services to ensure that, um, you know, our response to, the, to COVID-19 was basically uh, top-notch. But then COVID affected a lot of businesses. COVID affected even employees, by the way. So what they were, if you start from home, governor for some time did give, um, you know, some tax break. Okay. I think that was also the, from the national government. Yeah. So instead of, um, you know, 16, getting, yeah, 16. yeah, there, there was a slight reduction. But I think for, for that, was, that was, I think that was county led. So if you're a minister, for example, uh, you get a 30% uh, relief, you know, and it went like that, okay? The minister's got fewer, a lesser, um, you know, um, re uh, relief than, than the others mm -hmm. for a period. Yeah. Now, if you think about the business also, they had tax breaks, okay? Governor, the governor gave tax breaks mm -hmm. in the country. So, But probably the most important thing is that we have uh, now what we call uh, 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 an interest subsidy, okay? We are trying to get the businesses back. And you know that uh, capital is a very important, you know, um, uh, thing, you know, in, 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 in business factor, basically. So we are encouraging our people to get uh, capital, but now instead of them paying high interest rate, the county is subsidizing. We have, uh, um, you know, an MOU with the Kenya Commercial Bank. By the way, this is one of the deliverables of the Kisumu International Investment Conference. Mm. So we are putting money. I think the county has put in 100 million. Of course, they can borrow as much as they want from uh, KCB, but instead of them paying the interest rates okay, of KCB, which may be 15, 14%, we have given a subsidy. Okay. So then they have a cushion. So that difference of 7% can help them strengthen their BHR. Yeah, yeah, so sure. what we are doing. That, yeah. that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And uh, I've learned. Yeah. So you guys can also yeah. think about it, by the way. It's open uh -huh. uh, for you know enterprises such as yours. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Dr. Ray, about the marine school which we just have in our space here, tell me, what is the reaction of our very own people towards the same school? Are they taking up to be part of the school, to use our blue space so that they can have yeah. more mm -hmm. technology, advanced skills, Ama, they've relaxed on it? Mm -hmm. You know, one needs to understand uh, the backbone of the economy of Kisumu. Uh, to begin to understand how appreciative our people are uh, for the marine school. Uh, the economy of Kisumu, the backbone of the economy of Kisumu, relied on what was then called railways and harbors. Okay. It was the rail connection between the port of Mombasa and Kisumu, and of course the, now the port uh, connection between Kisumu now and East Africa and, and Central Africa. Of course, with the collapse of uh, the rail system, and the port system, uh, the economy of Kisumu, of course, took a nose dive. That's what now we're trying to revive. So now we have the port already uh, revived. We have the railway connection already revived, but we're also looking forward to, you know, the standard gate railway when, uh, you know, finally the new government comes in place. That will ensure that we have connection to the port of Mombasa and connection to the port of Lamu, okay? okay? A system that is going to be very efficient, you know, bringing in containers from those two ports inland into Kisumu, uh, hopefully, we'll also get some other in, inland container depots. Now we only have one, mm -hmm. uh, the one at Kibos, but we'll definitely be getting another one. Of course, there's also a plan to do a new port. Mm -hmm. So the old port will be there, but there's a plan now to do a new port, mm -hmm. just like there's a plan now to do a special economic, economic zone. Now, with the port and the revival of maritime transport and trade, you know, we have now ships and many boats, you know, plying 
um, you know, Kisumu, Port Bell, and other ports within the Lake, uh, Lake Victoria Basin, as it were. So there's going to be a need for specialists, okay, uh, to be able to work within that space. It's called the blue economy. So what uh, the government has done to set up a marine school in Kisumu to take care of that need, okay, not just for the region but also for elsewhere. Because if we have a school here, that means we can train people who can work elsewhere also in Tanzania, in Uganda, they can work in Uganda, they can work in Lamb, or any other place where, you know, the blue economy, we have, uh, you know, lakes like what we have here, or uh, shorelines, yeah, you know, sea, like what we have in, in Mombasa. So as a county, we have um, not been left behind. What we've done, by the way, is that we are training two people from every ward. We have 35 oh. wards. So we are training 70 people they already gone to school, uh, okay. they, 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 you know, doing, doing different, uh, you know, courses relevant to that space, mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the on full scholarship by the government. So we are training 70 people already. They are already in their first year. And this is something that you want to do every other, every other year so that our people are prepared, you know, for the jobs that will arise uh, from that space. Now, other than the railway trainings, I mean, the marine school, you know, we also have a shipbuilding yard, yeah. okay, right here. Okay, so we're hoping also in future that, uh, okay, already they're building ships, but we're hoping also that, um, you know, the, the, the small vessels we have in the lake, like the boats and whatnot, we, we may need to build modern ones, not the ones done with wood. You wood, know? all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we need to have that. modern ones. Yeah. Maybe build with fiberglass and, you know, stuff like that, so that we we have a new look, you know, technology. Yeah, I yeah. was wondering, technology yeah. is, uh, is changing. starting across everywhere, yeah, yeah. but on our lakes we still have the... The yeah, wood, the, the old wooden legs. Yeah. Now that is changing. Yeah. But again, if you go there now, you have some luxury uh, boats and uh, the ones that people use for you know leisure, mm -hmm. uh, which are now already fiberglass. We need to convince our people. The already they're convinced. Of course, this, the, the cost element mm -hmm. and the more reason why we are saying the trade fund we are talking about should start to make a lot of sense okay. uh, for those who want to do business. Yes, yeah. so we ex expect to see a lot of changes. Uh, then that space. Yeah. Kisumu is definitely Europe, as, as we <laughs> call it, and of yeah. course I can foresee that. Now, Dr. Ri, we are moving to election very yeah. soon. We are hardly three months away. And uh, I don't know, is our space really prepared for the same? What was mm -hmm. the reaction? Because I'm seeing a tit in two generations, yeah? Mm -hmm. You realize that the current youths, mm -hmm. the people who were born in 2020, are 22 years or the people who were born in the 2002 election are 20 years those are people going to vote but you realize that in all the in a row they've never seen anything good close to the election especially mm -hmm. on the top seats yeah, yeah. you realize also that the people who have voted like three times are within the youth bracket they're hardly 35 mm -hmm. and uh, these two people these two categories the 20 year old and between 20 and 35 mm -hmm. They've not had a very good experience yeah. on elections. Mm -hmm. The people who voted didn't feel like uh, they were given fairness, mm -hmm. and the people who have never voted again have never seen nothing close to good. Now, I don't know, have they responded well in matters of voters' registration? Are they ready to vote? Are they really re prepared for the same? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we, if you talk about voter registration, um, we, we wouldn't say we are very satisfied. Mm -hmm. In Kisumu alone, I think we have a bit, slightly more than 130,000. Uh, okay, new registered voters. Okay, so in Kisumu we have slightly more than six hundred thousand registered voters. Of course, uh, it's still open for those who want to. If you acquire your ID and you want to register, you can still go and register. But then you ask me a very important question. You know, uh, Kisumu, we are having the next election. What is it going to be like? Um, I know all eyes on Kisumu. Uh, we had it not very nice in the successive elections here. Uh, not 20, 2007, 2013, 2017. Um, people shudder to even imagine that you know we are going to another election because of what happens after uh, that particular election. But uh, things are different now. Uh, of course, out of the magnanimity, magnanimity of uh, one President Uhuru Kenyatta and the Right Honourable Raila Odinga, these two gentlemen, by the way, uh, put behind uh, their self-interest for the sake of the country. And I can say they are self-interest for the sake of Kisumu. Because if you think about uh, election, violence, uh, unrest and everything, Kisumu basically tops um, uh, in this country for the last three successive election years. Why? Because uh, they have, um, they, they, uh, well, it is true that there have been some unfairness um, in 
those three successive elections. So they've always been left dissatisfied, and sometimes they have, uh, you know, um, uh, vested their anger or shown their anger in manners that were not very, very nice. But because of the two uh, gentlemen I've just talked about, uh, because of the handshake, uh, things are completely different. We are talking about um, handling what you call divisive elections, that is one. Uh, secondly, we are talking about, um, you know, bridging the gap uh, between tribes. Uh, we are dealing now with uh, tribalism, you know. And uh, there's so many things that, you know, the nine, there's a nine-point agenda of uh, the Building Bridges Initiative that is, um, you know, largely, um, you know, being spearheaded by Raila Mamuling and the president to unite the country. Even if you look at the, 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 the coalition that we are now talking about, we are talking about Azimio call, Azimio Lamoja, a call for unity of the, of the country, so that we don't see ourselves as, you know, uh, different to different tribes. But most importantly is that... Um, uh, Raila Molodinga seems to have uh, the nod of this country finally, um, you know, to to lead. Um, there's every indication that he's the next president. We are happy in the country of Kisumu, quite honestly. We will be casting our votes very early in the morning. 99.9% um, .9 of those votes, we believe those are the votes that will be, you know, should be counted first even. Okay, then the other votes will we will come in because as as it were. This is Rael Amolo Dinga's bedrock, okay? Uh, it starts from Kisumu. It's the entry point uh, to the new nation who have supported him 101% over, over over the years, over the years, okay? And so uh, this time around, uh, if there's violence, I want to assure uh, the world, I want to assure the country that that violence will be elsewhere. Kisumu, we are not for violence. We are for peaceful elections. We will cast our votes. We will accept the outcome, um, uh, and we know that the outcome will be that Raila Odinga will be will be the president. But even in the very unlikely event, we doubt it. But in the very unlikely event that is not, Kisumu is going to be peaceful. The violence that we've seen before is behind our back. We are not going back there. We are talking about the blue economy. We are talking about a new port. We are talking about development. And you can see, okay, people call uh, Kisumu Europe. It's not by accident. It is because of what they can see. It's because of the plans that are there. It's because of what has been delivered. It's because of what we will deliver. The past is completely behind us. We are a new destination. We are a new Kenya, a new Kisumu. We are moving forward. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You realize you've also tackled matters of peace and tranquility yeah. in the process. Now, Dr. you will be in the race again. Mm -hmm. uh, also, your office is running to be elected mm -hmm. because it's the, it's not an authentic yeah. thing that you will be. So maybe in a half a minute, mm -hmm. you talk to your voters and tell them yeah. something about mm -hmm. you and Prof and yeah. the coming election. So we have uh, the party nomination to surmount. We are members of the Orange Democratic Movement. Uh, me and the professor, indeed, with the many other people uh, in the position of governor, uh, where we are, uh, we have competitors. We have our nominations on the 13th of uh, this month. Okay, we are ready for them. Um, me and Governor Professor Peter Nyanyo, and we hope that the other, uh, you know, contenders are also ready. Let us preach peace as we head towards the party uh, primaries. And uh, I want to repeat here, and I've said it before that in the event that one is defeated in the party primaries, you need to preach peace, you need to remain in the party. We all need to support uh, Raila Amolo Dinga. I'm, however, very optimistic that we will trounce uh, our competitors, okay? We will beat them, hands down, so that we get the party ticket to be able to present uh, our party, the ODM, in the many elections that is coming up on 9th of August of 2022. And as a part of Professor Nyangano's team, I want to assure, assure the party that uh, once nominated, we will not let them down, both in terms of, um, you know, the peaceful campaigns, but also to ensure that every vote is cast in this county in favor of the Azimir coalition and in favor of Mrs. Raila Molodin. You heard him, and that was from our deputy governor. Of course, at Authentic Europe Channel, our agenda is peace and tranquility, and therefore we encourage us to consider all the development that we've had in this space. And yes, whoever denies you peace is definitely taking away your birthright. Let us not destroy this far that we have come, but indeed focus on August and beyond. So this is your favorite host, Daisy Otoma, for Authentic Europe Channel. <laughs>